the flooding is ridiculous over the roads. Um, they've put the banks up higher, which is really cool, but it's not stopping everything coming out from the storm drains. Even probably pre-earthquake there was an issue, now it really is urgent that it happens. There's kilometres of stop banks either side of the river at the moment. They were put in immediately after the earthquakes to protect everybody. We really need them because there's thousands of properties which can be flooded if stop banks fail. But in the long term, what's the best way to protect those properties but also not make it so you can't get to the river so it's not big sort of walls beside the river which stop people getting close to the water like we are now. Stop banks don't have to look like stop banks. And what we're imagining is we push this back away from the river. So it might be over here, somewhere perhaps 150 metres even, you know, um, in this direction. And we'd raise that up, create a, create a, a mound, a stop bank, and then we'd landscape the, the, the land so that it dropped down towards the river in a series of terraces. And um, those terraces, they give us the, the opportunity to recreate a kind of natural edge to the river and to replant um, native ecosystems. They also give us a chance to have paths and boardwalks closer to the river and actually makes the stop bank function better so that when the river rises, the wetlands and the native vegetation in front of it absorb some of the energy of the flood water and the stop bank is not so vulnerable to damage. So this is all about adapting to climate change, adapting to sea level rise. So perhaps like with a stop bank, we might make it wider, but it doesn't necessarily have to be as high right away. We've allowed for that if we can build it higher, if we have to, and when we have to, and not before. From the 1870s, the Christchurch Drainage Board was established and from 1878, a network of stormwater drains emptied all of the city's stormwater into the river and that brought along with it waste. And that, of course, affected the quality of the water in the river, that affected the life within the river. It's ended up becoming an iconic, uniform width, uniform depth stormwater drain. This is an old stormwater pumping station. These pipes I'm standing on pump the stormwater into the river there. So this is the way that we used to deal with stormwater. We got rid of it as quickly as possible. So what if we do it slightly differently and we treat through wetlands and detention ponds uh, that water before it goes into the river? As you walk down the river corridor, in this Green Spine Park, people will be able to walk past a wetland, they'll be able to see uh, the water being cleaned, they'll be able to experience you know, the birds. You'll be getting a long fin deal, the tuna, a freshwater cray, we're getting some of that wildlife back. By planting native plant species, you attract those birds, you provide habitat and shelter for those aquatic species, uh, and then you add a point of interest for the residents who are using or visiting these areas as, as part of their day-to-day -day recreation, and you add interest for children. In that corridor, what we have now is an opportunity to give nature a bit more space. We can be creating something that, in the medium to long term, will be something that's of international significance. When we get more extreme weather, when we get sea level rise, we'll have far greater buffering and resilience against that. And I think that's an incredible benefit for future generations.